So what you do, what you think about, what you watch on TV, um, this all determines your experience of life. And so when you get into the routine of doing the same thing every day, you're taking those same neural pathways day after day. But when you do something new or you learn new information, that's when you create a new neural pathway in the brain. My name is Lindsay Mitchell. I have a background working as an internal medicine physician assistant, but now I work specifically with the brain in vital side. And I don't know if you've ever heard of this concept called neuroplasticity, but it basically means the brain's ability to change. So I help people to change their thoughts, emotions, and behaviors in response to some sort of very physical symptom or even an unwanted emotion. And I do this by kind of altering what neurotransmitters you use in the moment that you have a physical symptom. So I myself was very sick with chronic Lyme disease. And I had seen practitioner after practitioner that told me that I would have to live with this forever and I would just have to make myself comfortable. And that was so hard to hear in my early 20s but I was bedridden at the time and I felt extremely helpless. But I always kind of held on to this little bit of hope saying, you know, keep researching, keep reading, there's something else out there. And so I found out what this idea of neuroplasticity was and realized that if my brain was in this chronic stress response all the time, the body couldn't effectively heal. The immune system was affected, my detox capabilities, even my genetic expression was affected. So we have this thing called the chronic stress response, also known as fight or flight. And basically it protects us from danger so that when we see a bear in the wilderness, we can run away from that bear and our body responds by introducing stress hormones, increasing heart rate, increasing your respiration rate, all of these things. But this stress response is becoming more and more prevalent in our daily activities. Someone yells at you at work or your kids are nagging on you, there's technology, all of these things are ultimately creating this very distracting and stressful environment and that can cause the stress response to remain turned on. So I knew I had to do something different and that's when I started researching and reading and I found out that if I changed the brain, then my body would change. And so all of this information helped me to heal. So now every single day I can teach my clients this information and act as that beacon of hope in their lives that your brain can heal and once it does, your body can also heal. For me, spirituality is a form of science and science is a form of spirituality. So in the vital side practice, I teach the science behind what I do, but many of my clients use their spirituality in their practice. So I really think they go hand in hand. So if you're looking for different modalities to heal, I would just recommend researching, reading, googling, talking to people as much as you possibly can. So information opens you up to so many different pathways and different journeys, different healing journeys. No one is broken. And you may have suffered from some sort of diagnosis or had some sort of traumatic life event that caused tragedy in their life. But healing is always possible because you are the only one who can make changes to you. So keep trying, keep talking to people, and keep seeking those answers and just don't give up that hope.